Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at the January 2014 update for Adobe Illustrator CC. That's right, Creative Cloud, Illustrator, CC just keeps getting better with new features with each feature update. So no longer do you have to wait for an annual cycle or a yearly cycle. As soon as features are ready, they're released and I'm here to cover them. So let's take a look at some of the new things inside Illustrator CC and Illustrator CC got quite a bit this time. So let's take a look. So uh, first thing is, um, as you know, uh, as part of your Creative Cloud membership, you have access to uh, Typekit desktop fonts. And traditionally you would go to the Creative Cloud application to grab new fonts or manage those fonts. Well now inside Illustrator CC and InDesign CC, you have the ability to go in and uh, grab new fonts as needed to directly inside the application. So for example, if I go to, um, here, let's go to the character panel here. If I go to my uh, font menu here, I can see the fonts that I traditionally would always choose from that I have installed, but now I have a new option. Add fonts from Typekit directly here inside Illustrator CC. So if I click that, it'll take me over to my web browser. It will take me over to the Creative Cloud uh, Typekit area, and I can go and find whatever fonts I want. So I can look by uh, script. I can look by uh, sans serif. Uh, once I find a font that I like, uh, for example, Ephra here, I can go ahead and click on it. And if I uh, want to use that font, I can, first of all, peruse the styles and see if I really like it. If I do, I can say use fonts. And I can even pick and choose which styles of that font I want. And I'll go ahead and say sync selected fonts. Now, once I do that, that will activate Creative Cloud to basically uh, come back and uh, sync that font to my desktop, which it did. Four fonts were just added. And now, without having to do anything else, if I just head back to Illustrator, um, I didn't have to reboot. I didn't have to do anything special. I didn't have to download a package, install it, find a font manager, enable anything, do anything special. I just went and found a font and said, yep, that's the one I want to use. And now if I go to my font menu, um, I can even narrow it down with the Typekit filter and Ephra is there, all four fonts. So now that font is not only fair game for me to use here in Illustrator, but I can use it not only in any other Creative Cloud application, but any application on my computer. Yes, even PowerPoint. So if you wanted to uh, use your uh, Typekit desktop fonts, not only in your Creative Cloud application, but also your other applications, they are a fair game because that is now installed and available for my operating system to see system-wide. So that's one quick look at the Typekit integration. Uh, now let's go ahead and take a uh, look at one of the uh, few of the drawing capabilities. Uh, one of the biggest requested features uh, for years and years for Illustrator is to have um, live corners. In other words, we have this mountain scene here, and now when I click on it, you'll not only see the little points and, and paths, but you'll see little handles everywhere there's a point. And that handle allows me to do live corners. That's right. I can click with one click and drag a handle and adjust all of my corners or individual corners. So for example, if I deselect and say, nope, I just want to adjust this one, then I can go ahead and adjust that one. And if I want to get more precise or see what options I have, I can double click on the handle and get right into, uh, and maybe make it an inverted corner or maybe one that's a little bit more flat or straight across. I can even be very precise um, for the corner measurement itself and tell it how round or how not round to make it. So live corners here in uh, Illustrator CC, big request, People have been wanting this for years. We saw it appear in InDesign. We even saw it appear in Photoshop. And now it's finally here in Illustrator CC as well. All right, so let's uh, click OK. We've got our live corners here. The next thing I'm going to do while I'm in this document is head over to another artboard where we're going to do something I normally don't do. I'm going to draw. That's right. If you've seen me work before, you're, gonna, you're probably cringing at this point because you know I'm not an artist. I don't draw traditionally. However, I've been using Illustrator since as far back as pretty much Illustrator 1.1 or Illustrator 88. So my tool of choice had always been the pencil tool, I'm sorry, the pen tool, because it was very precise and I knew how to use it. But it was never what I would consider to be fun. No one ever thinks of the pen tool as a fun way to draw inside Illustrator. 
However, there's this great pencil tool, but the problem with the pencil tool is while it is very accurate by default, that is both a plus and a minus. Because if I wanted to draw a nice arc like this or a nice curve, and I try to do it with my hand, well, I mean, I did okay that time, but next time I try and do it, it may not be okay. In other words, it's going to it's going to vary every time I do it. Here, let's turn on some strokes there. Every time I do it, it's going to vary the amount of um, points and add points and create points and maybe not be so smooth. As a matter of fact, all of those look totally different because it just depended on where my hand landed. And I'm drawing with a stylus, so I'm actually cheating a little. So let's undo a few of those. And now let's go in and double click on the pencil tool and switch it to a new fidelity option called smooth. So we'll click okay. And now when I draw my arc, I get nice smooth arcs. Even if I didn't draw them perfectly curved every time. That's because Illustrator is now saying, I think I know what you're trying to do. Let me help you out. As opposed to, I'm gonna just let you do it your way and you know, good luck. So uh, the new pencil tool is actually making Illustrator fun to draw with. So for example, if I want to draw here and then I decide, now keep in mind, it made that curve with only two points as opposed to four or five points in between. If I want to then join that, I just point right at it and I can continue working on it and it will continue making my arc. If I now want a straight line to come from that, I hold down my option or alt key and I can get a perfectly straight line. And this is the kind of drawing that I've always wanted to do. But again, either I had to do it with a pencil tool or I had to know what I was doing. Let me undo that last one there. Actually, let me undo both of these. I'm gonna hold down my option or alt key and hold down the shift key. There we go. And then one more time, option or alt, hold down the shift and let go of the pen tool or pencil tool first, then the um, uh, keys. And now if I wanted to continue that with an arc, Again, it does a nice job of joining that together, knowing what I'm trying to do by anticipating and smoothing those lines out. So Illustrator, think of the pencil tool as the fun version of the pen tool. <laughs> we can now draw our accurate curves and paths and accurate straight lines, but we can just draw them. We don't have to learn how to manipulate the pen tool anymore. Okay, so with that, and we didn't take the pen tool away for those that love it, it's still there. Now the next thing is um, reshaping. For example, now that I've drawn this, I kind of see, well, I kind of don't like that thing in the middle. Maybe I kind of want this point to just join to that point. So I can start here anywhere along this path. And because the pencil tool has always been a great reshaping tool, I can just re simply reshape that. I don't have to delete a point, move a point, adjust a point, just reshape it to my heart's content until I'm happy with it. And it will just keep reshaping it until I like it. So you can keep refining things quickly and easily with the pencil tool, unlike ever before. So with that, what's next? Well, there is another feature. Underneath the pen tool, there's this anchor point tool, which was always used to simply convert corners into curves and curves into corners. But it's taken on a new life. Because now if I hover on a path, it actually becomes a path segment reshape tool. So where I have perhaps a straight line, and I want to curve that, just simply drag it. And now it's a curve. So I can simply and easily correct. For example, I've got this nice curve here. I want to make a little bit more wind in my cells. Just simply drag it out. So drawing has never been better than an Illustrator CC with this update. All right, so we've got the ability with the pencil tool to draw curves, straight lines, refine them, reshape them, and now with the path uh, segment tool, we can do that as well. Now, speaking of tools, does that mean I'm gonna now not need as many tools as I used to use? Well, maybe, maybe not. S keeping that in mind, the tool panel has got a ton of tools on it that you may use every day or you may never use. So another new feature inside Illustrator CC is the ability to go to tools and create a new tool panel. That's right, you can make your own Terry White, I suggest you use your name though, your own tool panel 
And now you can simply drag and drop whatever tools onto it. Oops. Here, let's, do, let's take that out. There we go. Drag and drop whatever tools onto it you want or the ones you're going to use the most. So for example, I'm probably going to use the type tool, probably going to use the pencil tool. I kind of like that new uh, anchor point tool that allows me to adjust segments. So let's go ahead and put that one on there. And I kind of like the uh, width tool. Hang on. There we go. There we go. I like the width tool. In other words, I'm creating my own custom tool panel. And I can then go under uh, my view menu and I can, here under the window menu here, actually, window menu, tools, and I can turn off the default tool panel and just have my own. So I now have the ability to have my own set of tools that I use all the time and not have to use uh, the exact tool panel that comes with the program and is configured only the way the program allows me. So I can keep that tool panel, make my own tool panel, make multiple tool panels. So for example, uh, here's a tool panel that I created earlier uh, with a few more tools on it and I made it a double column tool panel. So there you have it. You can create your own tool panel finally inside Illustrator CC. Now speaking of all these settings and changes you're making, Another new uh, ability is the ability to share your settings with your colleagues or share your settings uh, amongst others. Now, of course, we have sync settings for you for your own computers. But what if you said, hey, I created these cool uh, brushes, these cool custom tools, and I want to share them with the rest of my design shop. Well, now uh, under the file menu, uh, you have the ability, or is it under the edit menu? I'm sorry, under the edit menu, you now have the ability to export your settings out. So once you customize Illustrator to your heart's content, you can export your settings out as a file, and then others will import your settings, and then they will get your tool panels, they will get your brushes, they will get all the cool things you've done inside Illustrator. So another quick enhancement inside Illustrator CC. Next, we're gonna head to take a look at uh, something that was introduced actually a while back in uh, Photoshop uh, CS5, I believe, and that is perspective drawing. So let's take a look at some of the enhancements that perspective drawing got this time around. So first and foremost, I can quickly and easily now change the view. Uh, so for example, I can uh, drag this out to eh, right around 70 and give it a second and it will um, change my perspective and allow me to rotate this building in perspective. So just um, perspective drawing enhancements allowing me to quickly and easily uh, change my um, view. So for example, if I pull this up, uh, let's go to about 100 and 170 something there, then it will change my perspective and allow me to actually see inside or behind the wall. And if we um, scroll over a little bit here, and we pull this one out, Oh, I don't know, maybe around negative 20 something, 24, 25. Uh, again, we can rotate this. So just quickly and easily changing perspective of something uh, that was drawn using the perspective grid. Now I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here where I see some text. And I'll just go ahead and double click on that text. And that will bring up the text where I can then go in and change the font to, I don't know, how about Ephra since we downloaded that. Let's see if that worked. Ephra italic. There we go. Ephra italic. And we'll go ahead and hit the escape key to get out of um, out of that particular plane. And it should re-render. Perhaps. Maybe not. Let's see. Did I screw that up? There we go. All right. So let's try that one more time. Double click. Change our font. Italic. There we go. And then we'll just uh, get out of isolation mode and have it update. All right. So there we are. The ability to, and there's our italics, the ability to work better with our perspective drawing. Now, uh, another thing that's uh, new inside photo, or Illustrator CC, and that is the ability to have responsive SVG. So what does that mean? Let's head over to our web browser. And in our web browser, we're going to take a look at this particular uh, web page which if we scroll up a little bit, we can see that as we bring the browser window in, um, the rest of the HTML, here, let me scroll down a bit here, the rest of the HTML is responsive. It's adjusting to the width of the browser.
but you notice the sail with a whale isn't really adjusting. That's because it's using scalable vector graphics, so we get some nice vectors on the web, but SVG has always been a fixed size until now. So for example, that size of that will not change, but if I go to this web page, where we've got the exact same uh, web design, but using a responsive SVG file, it actually controls the size of it and re-renders in vectors at no matter what size we're in. So whether I'm looking at it on a smartphone, tablet, or um, desktop computer, the vector graphics will look nice and sharp and nice and crisp. And this is great for people, that especially are doing web design, maybe uh, for uh, retina displays or high DPI. And you just want to create one scalable gra vector graphic file and have it be responsive and work on all of your uh, website designs for your various um, display sizes. So that's a, and, and okay, before we leave, I was gonna say that was it, but let's say, let's take a look at how that's done. Uh, let's zoom out here. So we have the file here, and to simply, to make this responsive, all we'd have to do is go up to, well, to make the responsive SVG, we will do a save as, we will um, tell it that it's going to be saved as SVG for scalable vector graphics. And last but not least, uh, in the more options, there is now a checkbox for responsive. That's all you have to do to make a responsive SVG file for your web designs. So that's a quick look at the top new things available in Illustrator CC for the January 2014 update. And I want to commend the Illustrator team. They packed quite a bit in this update and addressing uh, quite a few of the uh, concerns or needs of the users, uh, especially around... Um, just the live corners and the pencil tool and just making drawing more fun and all the things that we've done and seen now inside Illustrator CC. So thanks again for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.